Hello, I'm Andrew Voigt, and welcome to my fourth and final video about digitally play testing during COVID-19 using Tabletop Simulator. Here, I'm going to show you a handful of useful functions that I use to add a little extra polish and improve playability for my games. The game we're going to be using for the example is one of my designs, Snow Day the Cold War. The first thing you should be aware of is the toggles menu. If you right click on an asset and hover over toggles, you'll see a list of settings that you can either enable or disable. I'm going to walk through a couple of these for you. The first one, lock, controls whether or not a player can pick up and move objects. So now that I've locked this card, I cannot pick up or move it. This is useful to do on boards and on player cards and things of the like that players need to see, but you're not going to want them to be able to pick up and move during the game. You can also activate or enable it, this toggle by hovering over the card and tapping L. Next, we're going to look at snapping points. Again, in the toggles menu, you'll see it's the third one down. Now, to set up a snapping point, move to the toolbar menu on the left and select point. There are two kinds. There's a generic snap and there's a rotate snap. The generic snap will put a point with the snap point set. You can drag over anything that has the snap toggle enabled and it'll automatically lock on that space. So your uh, players just have to get it near the space and it'll snap to where it needs to be. Now, a more useful variant of that is the rotate snap. This will not only create a snap point, but it'll also designate that the assets on it be rotated in a certain direction. The easiest way to set this up is to set your asset where you want it. Click the rotate snap tool and click the asset. Now that asset will rotate correctly whenever it's placed over that snap point. To remove a snap point, go ahead and select the snap tool and click on a point on the table. That will remove the existing point. Sometimes you might have a group of random items that you're going to want to draw from a bag. To do this, go to the objects menu, select components, go to tools, and take a bag and set it on the table. Now you can put the components that you want to be randomized in that bag. Right click, choose shuffle, and now you can pull them out one at a time in a random order. Now say you have a single asset or token that you want an infinite amount of. Go to that same tools menu and pull out the infinite bag. Whatever asset you put in there, you'll now create an infinite number of duplicates for. This is useful for things like health and damage tokens. Now we're going to look at the grid. To make sure the grid is turned on, go to Options and select Grid. Click Show Lines and adjust it for however you need it to be. If an object has the grid toggle enabled, it'll snap automatically to your grid based on how you have it configured. This is an easy way to control placing units on a map. That way, whenever you drop the piece, it always lands perfectly in the center of the space. Lastly, I want to show you hands. Hands are set up by default. And when you choose a player color, your name displays where your hand is. Cards you draw are placed into that hand and also appear at the bottom of that player's screen. A player can hide their hand by tapping H. When you're setting up your game, you can customize how many and where these hands are set on the around the table. Go to the zone tool on the left and choose hands. All current hand zones will display on the table. To delete a zone, simply click on it. To add a new zone, drag a square and then right click to choose the color of that zone. Now, when a player chooses that color, their hand and user icon appear in that hand zone. And so these were some of the most useful functions and tricks that I frequently use to make my games display and play better. 
Thank you for watching this series for digital playtesting during the COVID-19 virus. I hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy. If you have any questions for me, you can find me on Facebook as Andrew Voigt Design or on Twitter at Andrew V Design.